So we're going to um, be audio and visual recording this uh, webinar. So if you prefer not to be on screen or uh, to mute your mic, feel, feel free to do that. Um, but of course, we uh, ideally would love to have you on screen and participating in this webinar actively. Um, I, uh, I have put a resources page up on Connected Cultures um, website, which is part of Caring Kind. Um, and there on the resources page, you'll find uh, videos of the previous few, um, few webinars that we've had as part of this series. So if you uh, need to step away for any reason or you want to watch some of those other videos, you can find them there. Um, as far as going forward, um, your mics will be kept muted during um, some of this program so we can cut down on ambient noise. Elizabeth is going to do a, sh a short exercise where we do ask that you participate. So uh, when that time comes, we ask that you unmute yourself and Elizabeth will let you know when that happens. Um, we're going to, if you think of uh, any questions that, questions that you'd like to ask, uh, please do enter them in the chat room. Or right now we're a fairly small group, so uh, if you want to throw up a hand, you can do that and um, unmute yourself and ask them person to person. Of course, we, we prefer that just because it seems to be uh, another level of, of connection that we can have uh, through these virtual experiences. Um, and now I want to introduce Elizabeth Gronke, who is a, a longtime colleague um, who has has worked kind of in several different roles. Currently, she's the Associate Museum Educator at the American Folk Art Museum, um, working with their program called Folk Art Reflections uh, for people with dementia and their caregivers. And I will pass the mic on to you, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. I'm so glad to be here. I see a familiar face, a few familiar faces, so that's really nice. Um, yeah, I've prepared a presentation that I'm going to screen share right now as a way of um, guiding our discussion. And I'm hoping to be able to click that. Okay, can you see a screen that says Elizabeth Gronke in really big letters? <laughs> Great. Okay, so um, yes, I'm a registered art therapist and an access educator. I've worked for many years um, as, an, as a program manager of a social day program. So doing activities and, and uh, coming up with ideas of things to do with people with dementia has been my, my mode for a long time and working with the museum has been a wonderful fit. So I'm here to tell you about what we do at the American Folk Art Museum. First question I usually like to ask people, and since we are a nice small group, I can see everybody while I, well, we have someone else joining us, good. I like, so I can see you if you've chosen to share your screen. Have any of you ever been to the American Folk Art Museum? And if you have and you want to share, you can unmute yourself or just raise your hand. And if you haven't, I encourage you very strongly to go visit when we reopen, which hopefully will be later this summer. Uh, the museum itself is located across from Lincoln Center on uh, Columbus between 65th and 66th. And then we also have a by appointment gallery space in Long Island City, Queens, which is also where our administrative offices are. And one of the great things about visiting either of those sites is that it's free. Unlike other museums where you make a money commitment and it's a huge museum and you kind of commit to the whole day of visiting, the Folk Art Museum is a smaller, smaller space always a really beautifully curated show. We have about three per year. And so you'll always see something different and you can pop in and pop out and you always learn something really interesting and wonderful and usually very inspiring. So I also like to ask people when I'm in a group, um, when I go visit, I, when I visit programs around the city, I ask people I'm working with, what 
is Bogart. So this is the part where I would love for you, if you're interested, I don't want to pressure anybody, but I would love to hear what you think of when I say folk art. And please feel free to unmute yourself. No one's going to take, no, no takers on this one? Oh, we've got Lucy, uh, early American, she says. Okay, thank you for reading that. I couldn't see that. Um, yeah, early Amer there's a lot of early American works in the Folk Art Museum. Absolutely. And I so have, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. I have been to the museum, not in recent years, although I did attempt a trip with my mom at least three years ago, but we only made it as far as um, downtown on the east side bus, but she she just couldn't handle the bus, so we didn't make it uh, I'm sorry. Worse. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I know, if getting, I getting to, out to the museum. Sorry. Go ahead. Go if ahead. If I were able to be with mom, I would be doing this with her. <laughs> but actually, it's just me here. She's now in memory care as of this past year, upstate in Poughkeepsie. Right. But maybe in the future, okay, I'll well, be able to do this with her, I hope. Right. Yeah, maybe to bring her down, or I'm going to be sharing some other resources that you could bring up to her from the museum, mm -hmm. which I'm really happy to be able to offer. And um, yeah, so yeah, it's hard to get out. It's hard to get to the museum, which is why the program I'm going to describe to you soon um, exists, because we've made it possible for, for the Folk Art Museum to get out to people. <laughs> which really right. helps. Um, as I said, I was a program manager, so I know I have, I usually had a group of people who would love some enrichment w with folk art, but to get the whole group out to the museum was, was a huge challenge, a huge logistical um, uh, hurdle. So, Can't yeah, so imagine. to have, yeah, right. So, um, yeah, so, so any other ideas about what is folk art? Anything, anybody else want to chime in? Artsy, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, I've always found there, there are interesting materials that artists use. Mm -hmm. Kind of not, not, right. not necessarily paintbrushes, you know, kind of your fine art materials, but um, things right. that you might have in their immediate environment. That's right. Yeah, and found materials and... Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of people think of quilting when they think of folk art. A lot of people. Oh, there's two more messages. Yeah. It's wooden quilt, Lucy says. Yes. And um, a lot of people talk about self-taught art. So I'm going to show you a few pieces of art that kind of, I used a few adjectives when, when Meredith asked for a few words to describe this program. So I, I went through the, the museum's website, which has a beautiful, accessible way to see some of most of their collection. And I found pieces that, that fit this, I think I said wild, intricate, um, humorous, and touching artworks. So, hello, I'm glad we have more people. Hello, Susan. So this is a part of the presentation where I would love participation. So don't be shy, don't feel like I'm here just to observe. You can, you can be a participant. Um, the next image I wanna show you is a piece of art I considered a little bit wild, but what do all of you think about it? What do you see in this? I see um, Tammy, try, Tammy, I think you're saying something, but I don't know, can you unmute yourself? Almost, I think she might. Oh, great, she's getting help. Hi yeah. there. Hi. Hi, so, so what do you see in this painting? I think it's very colorful. And yeah. I, I think it um, goes to what's um, the area that it comes from. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's very pretty. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it's it's got a lot of movement in it, right? And this I chose as an example of of 
this is a self-taught artist and he did have access to brushes if he wanted but he actually preferred the way it looked when he used other tools to sort of smudge on the the board so he was unbounded by he was uh, unbounded by uh the the requirements of of fine art right so he could experiment and play with the art materials in a way maybe that other artists who are trained in other ways wouldn't do, wouldn't even try it. Thank you, Tammy, for adding to that. Okay. All right, I'm gonna, sh Sorry, I'm just gonna show you, an, uh -huh. one other were comment. there more comments? Um, well, Lucy says she really likes it. <laughs> um, uh -huh, great. Guessed if it was a painting. Um, and yes. I also wanted to include that you, you mentioned um, in your descriptive words, intricate. And from what I can see on screen, it, there's so much detail in this painting or in this work of art. Right, right, right. So even though, yeah, so this was the one I chose for a while, but you're absolutely right. There's so much going. If it, I feel like if, I, if it was in front of me, I would just go right up to it and want to see all of those little wiggles that he created. You can see the artist's hand in all those, all those wiggles, yeah. So another piece of art that I chose for intricate, um, I would love for you to look at and tell me what you think of this piece of art. Hi, Susan. Hi there. Sorry. Nice to see you. That's okay, glad you could make it. Anybody want to uh, make a comment or share what they think about this piece of art? Imagine it about this big, more than a foot, um, about a foot across diameter. It looks very elegant to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of subtle colors. Can you guess what it's made of? No, I don't know what it's made of. So Lucy says, is it lace art? That's a very good guess and it, you're close. It's paper. Oh, really? And it's, it's cut paper. So you know how we make a snowflake by folding a piece of paper into sections and then you cut the edges? Well, this was made by that same process. You can still see the creases in the paper if you get up close to it in the museum. And you can see that this was made by folding and cutting and then it was painted and written on. It's basically a Valentine. It's a, it's a love, it's called, it's called, I can't say the, I'm not sure how to pronounce it in German, but it's, it's a love letter. And what makes this a really sweet uh, piece in the museum, and it actually happens to be in the current exhibition, the, it's called, the current exhibition is called um, American Perspectives, Stories from the Folk Art Museum Collection. This was made by someone who was a Hessian. He was a German soldier who was enlisted by the British Army to fight against those upstarts in America. But he stayed in America <laughs> and he became an American in the end. So there's something especially sweet to me about this, this piece of art that was, it's part of the American story, are the people that come here who don't think they're gonna stay, but they end up staying. All right. Any more comments on this piece before I show you another type of folk art? No more comments? Nothing in the comment box I missed? No, I think we're good. Okay. To go. Good. Here's another piece. I hope that you're oh. going to have to adjust my way I'm viewing all of you so I can see this piece. But what do you think of this sculpture? What do you all think? Humorous. This one I chose. What? Humorous? Yeah, this is the one I chose for humorous. Just because it delights me. It's not funny, funny. But I, I want to tell you that this sculpture is big. It's not a little miniature. It sits about as tall as a Good sized dog. Oh, there's some comments. Yeah, Lucy loves it. <laughs> okay, Lucy loves it. 
Oh, great. Yeah, I, this is one of my favorite pieces in the collection. Uh, it has such a strong presence in the gallery when, it, when it's out. And uh, those eyes are so the <laughs> engaging. Expression. I the know, expression. right? Yes. I know. Whimsical. And the name, he's, he's got a name, Peppy. <laughs> oh, I couldn't and this, that. Yeah. I love the fact that it's a tiger, but he's wearing a collar, so you sense that he's not completely wild. <laughs> no, like a dog's expression, too. Yeah, that quizzical. If you've ever had a dog. Mm -hmm. they, do, they do give you that look sometimes, <laughs> usually when you're eating something delicious. Yeah. Um, but this was made by a folk artist from the American Southwest who, who has made a lot of a lot of animal sculptures and part his his story uh Filippo Benito Felipe Bonito Archuleta is his name and he he says that he like sort of was going through life struggling financially and he prayed to God you know please show me the way what what should I do and he was told to carve wood and he started making animal figures and in, in the area of the, the country he's from, there's a tradition of carving wood for religious objects, but he felt unworthy <laughs> to be making these religious objects. Instead, he made animals and he's done extreme, he did extremely well and sort of started the whole generation of, of animal folk art in his part of the world. And yeah, so his story is another one of those really inspiring self-taught artists stories in in folk art so that's one of the reasons it's really a rich area of art in which to 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 present to people especially people who don't consider themselves artists in any way because it's accessible it's it's full of these stories of finding yourself through art anything else about pepe before we move on pepe elizabeth Yes. How big is this sculpture? I'm sorry, I don't have the exact dimensions, but I it, I recall it's sitting about three feet high. Oh, so it's quite big. I had it. I thought it was like a tabletop uh, size. No. Oh, okay. No, no, it's so it's I. it's big. <laughs> <laughs> well, that changes your whole perception of. Uh, oh of yeah. Kind of the the scale of it. Oh, definitely, yeah. And the and the like I said, the presence of it in the gallery. You know, you look in the gallery and it looks back at you. <laughs> so it's fantastic. I'd like What's to just, that, Susan? Yeah, I just want to add one thing. Is thanks to Elizabeth, we looked this artist's um, website up. And if you want to have fun with your loved ones, um, just bring his site up, and you'll see these marvelous animals that really are quite you feel very engaged with them and he's very talented. So um, I just recommend Elizabeth's suggestions. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Susan. I'm really glad that you did that. And um, yeah, that I'm going to get to sort of how you managed to get that suggestion. <laughs> okay. from me. Yeah, I promise I will. I wanted to look at art together just to give a sample of sort of what we do with the Folk Art Museum. But thank you so much, Susan. That means a lot to me. All right, the next piece of art is, can you see what this is or is it being covered up like mine is? <laughs> no, you're okay. Okay. What does this look like to all of you? A glove. <laughs> yeah. A glove, you said? Yes. Oh, yes. I, it's a close-up of a big piece of art that has many, many hands on it, and all of the hands have a have a heart in the middle. And I use this one for touching, you know, like emotionally touching. It says, hand and heart shall never part when this you see, remember me. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. Is it paper? Or is it a... It is paper. Oh, okay. You, you got it. It's paper. 
Yep, and it was part of a big tradition of woven and cut and woven paper that I guess men, women, children, everybody was doing these projects at a certain point in American history. So the museum has quite a lovely collection of, of sort of different kinds of Valentines, but I don't think they were made just for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So this, this is a, like a little overview. Now, if I were doing a program for a group of individuals with dementia, it would have a more cohesive theme. We'd spend a little more time on each piece, but I probably wouldn't show more than three or four pieces. And, um, but this is how we would do it in a Zoom session is, is going back and forth about what we're noticing about a piece of art. And sometimes if the historical and the art historical or historical elements kind of fit in, then, then they get put in there. But really it's more about how a, how a group of people might react to a piece of art personally. So that's sort of, that's an overview of folk art and, and a little view of what we do with the Folk Art Reflections program. Now for many years, about 10 years, the Folk Art Reflections was a gallery program. It was once a month in the museum and individuals with dementia with their caregivers would come in and um, have a similar experience. One, or, you know, maybe with two or three pieces of art in whatever exhibition happens to be up guided by an art educator with training with dementia care. It's been a successful program for many, many years, uh, led by Rachel Rosen, the head of the education department. And I had known her because I brought groups to the museum. And recently, we were able to expand the program. So I was hired to bring the museum out to places like day programs, like residences, memory care residences, anywhere they're already serving groups with dementia, I could offer to come in and bring an art program and a discussion. The other way around, first a little discussion, then art making. And I usually try to bring in a touch object to relate to whatever we're talking about. Like, I love it when I get to bring out the quilt. Everyone loves that. I, you see a, a, a lovely lady on the right side holding scrimshaw, this um, carved whalebone type thing. And uh, it's been a great way to bring the museum to people. It looks but very of course, happy. Right? Yeah, she had a lot of fun with that project. Mm -hmm. And it was special for me because this is the day program where I used to work. So it's a way for me to stay connected to those folks. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we also, as part of this expansion of the, mem of the uh, Folk Art Reflections program, we've been offering a concert per exhibition. So about three per year. This one that we have a photo of right here was really special. It, the exhibition was... Uh, quilts. So I had the thought of hiring a vocal artist who could lead us in a song circle. So that idea of weaving your voices together, just like when people come together to make a quilt. And it was really cool. I have to say we filled that museum space. Also, it's conducted when the museum is closed to the public so that it's a really welcoming environment for, for individuals with dementia and their caregivers. They don't have to they can, they can feel very welcome and, and rest easy that they are there with a group of understanding people. And then another big adaptation with COVID, since we can't do the in-gallery in museums and we can't do the in-gallery uh, talks and music programs, um, I've been making videos, which Susan has been a really great supporter of and fan of, I'm grateful. Uh, I, I started out making one a week. It's been tapering off a little bit as more and more groups want Zoom sessions, but they are up on the museum's public uh, YouTube channel. So if you want to see any or all of them that I've made so far, they are, they are access, accessible there. And uh, these, these are short videos, as you can see, about like 10 to 15 minutes long, and usually they end with a suggestion at the end of something you can do at home. 
So for Lucy, this might be something you could watch with your mom, perhaps? Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. You're I welcome. I still look forward to it. Oh, great. Please let me know if you can. I will. Um, I have my, yeah, let me know how it works out. I will. And maybe at the, the place where she's living, they can, they can show it. Yeah, I'll bring my that's laptop. <laughs> or maybe they great. have one. Oh, that's perfect. And then we've also been, as I, as I mentioned, doing Zoom sessions. I know we're about to time out, so I'll try to wrap up, Meredith. Um, okay. So, so yeah, we've been doing Zoom sessions with some of the community partners that we already were connected with, like the day programs and the residences. And what I do is I put a few, like I'm doing with all of you right now, I put up a few slides of images, and then as a group, we can look at them and talk about them. And they usually last about an hour. Is that an artist of today on the subways? Oh, you know what? No, this was painted in 1950. Wow. You know there's an oh, 55. artist that they were putting up in the subways. Hmm. And a lot of the art was uh, of people on the subway. Right. I love seeing the artwork that they put up. And this, these advertisements on this remind me of the artwork they put up on the subway. Yeah, no, this guy was, this, oh, there's so much to learn about in folk art. So F Ralph Fascinella was a self-taught artist and very much an activist and a believer in the working people of New York City. So, um, All walks yeah. of life. I just, yeah, I love this painting. This is so familiar. And, and especially in times of COVID, it just feels so endearing, you know, to see all of us together, on individuals, but together on the subway. It was like, I can't wait to see that again. So this is the way to contact me um, through my email. You can ask Meredith if you want to connect her to me. And of course, looking at the museum's website is where you're going to find the resources uh, that will connect you to the Folk Art Reflections program. I'll stop sharing so that we can look at each other. And I think I cut it right up to one minute past. <laughs> you are perfect, Elizabeth. This okay. is so wonderful. Um, I do want to say add on, uh, in addition to thanking Elizabeth for joining us as our guest speaker, um, that the, some of the resource, resources that she mentioned, mentioned are going to be posted along with the recording of this video on our website. So you, you don't have to madly scribble down the, uh, the websites. Um, that will be accessible on our uh, web page as soon as we get the video up. Um, thank you so much, Elizabeth. This was wonderful. I, My it, pleasure. It makes me want to be in the museum and to it really experience the, the music that you bring in as well as the, to go along with the Folk Art Reflections Program. Um, I remember going to a couple of the programs uh, a while ago now, um, but it's you, the, the responses that you get between the music and the discussions and just the, the ease of the energy in that space uh, is very welcoming and very, um, it's wonderful to see those responses, so thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments before we close things? I know we're a little bit over and I wanna be respectful of your time. Um, if you want to reach out to Elizabeth directly, you have her email. Um, if you want to learn more about this or other programs uh, for you as caregivers and caregivers together with the people with dementia, um, you can check out our Connect to Culture webpage online um, and that you can find at caringkindnyc.org. Um, thank you again for joining us. We do appreciate your participation. And we do have one last webinar that's scheduled for next Monday, July 6th, at the same time at 1 o'clock. And that'll be um, the guest speaker from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Rebecca McGinnis, uh, who is a longtime uh, senior museum educator there in accessibility. She's wonderful. So I hope that you can join us then. Until then, keep cool, keep safe, and we'll see you next Monday. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Nice to see you. Thank you.